Yeah, hi, so my name's Megan. Um, I am currently an archeologist working for MOLA and I'm also the chairperson of the CIFA Early Careers Group and have been for the past couple of years. Um, so the question that I'm asking today is, is archeology span a sustainable career? And I've gone for an early career perspective so, so that it's not just me sharing my opinions and, and sort of talking at you. Um, I did a little survey um, and I surveyed early career archaeologists and also people that have left the field. Um, and some of the results are a little bit not so fun. <laughs> so first off, I think we need to talk about what makes a sustainable career. So one definition that I definitely didn't find on the first page of Google um, <laughs> is that a sustainable career is one that's aligned with your interests, strengths and values and offers ongoing learning and renewal. When I asked early career archaeologists what they wanted out of a sustainable career, these were the top things that came up. First one was something that pays the bills, which I feel is the, the bare minimum. <laughs> um, Another one is having job security. They're roles that don't lead to burnout or physical injury. Roles that are supportive of both your mental and your physical health and that support your professional growth. And a really important one that came up a lot was something that had good work-life balance. So, do early career archeologists feel that their careers are sustainable? The majority that I surveyed said no. I have to turn a page. <laughs> so really worryingly, 64% of the early career archeologists that I surveyed felt that their roles weren't meeting the standards for sustainability. Only 20% of those surveyed said that they felt that their roles were sustainable. So I feel like that should really worry us. So what are the issues that people are facing? Lack of work-life balance and poor pay, uh, very high on the list of issues that are coming up a lot. Um, one of the things for poor pay um, that I really recommend looking into if you haven't seen it already is the Badger 2022 Poverty Impact Report. Um, other things that came up a lot were health problems and then also not feeling valued or supported by the organisations that they work for. And as mentioned by Amy, this is something that keeps people in the sector or keeps people in jobs if they feel that they are supported um, in their own professional development. And then another thing that came up multiple times was that the senior roles didn't seem to be worth the pay increase. So we're losing people from the sector. That is just a fact. And people are leaving early in their careers. When asked why they left, people noted that their roles weren't sustainable long term. They also noted high pressures of away work, poor pay, again. Um, unpaid hours or long commutes that were also unpaid. Poor work-life balance coming up again. And then also concerningly and also linking to the exhibition that we've got on in this week, uh, Workplace Sexism. Forty-five percent of the early career archaeologists that I surveyed said that they were unlikely to stay in archaeology for more than two years. If their current contract ended, 25 percent said that they would be very unlikely to stay in the sector, so not just in archaeology and in, in the heritage sector as a whole and 25% said that they would be unlikely to stay. So that is half of the people that I surveyed. What does this mean for us in a sector that does have quite precarious and short contracts quite often? So maybe the question that we should be asking is why are people staying? So the most common reason that people gave for staying in the sector was that they enjoyed their job and that they enjoyed archaeology, 
even if they felt that the roles weren't sustainable. Even those that said that they felt that their roles were unsustainable mentioned a love for archaeology. Conversely, to the people who wanted to leave, those who wanted to stay felt that they felt said that they felt supported and valued. So instead of just speaking <laughs> and saying what's bad, what can we do about these issues? So here are a couple of suggestions of what we can do. And you'll notice that they are sort of the opposite of what the problems were. So number one is supporting staff to maintain a good work-life balance. Um, this might mean rotating away work where possible um, and just working with staff to maintain something that is sustainable for them. Number two is pay staff fairly at all levels and ensure that if you are promoted, then that extra work that you're taking on is remunerated fairly. Uh, sort of linking in with that is paying staff for the hours that they are worked, <laughs> the hours that they work, um, including any overtime that they do that might fall into an unpaid category normally. Another thing that I think we really need to be focusing on is supporting staff with both their mental and physical health and providing stability with permanent contracts where possible. Um, so I'm just going to leave you with this thought. The future of archaeology needs to be sustainable. Otherwise, there is no future in archaeology. Thank you. <laughs>